Hey guys, Dan Staten with Elk Shape. Today we're going over improving or increasing your draw strength, a topic that I find exciting. I've been in the hunting and fitness space for over 20 years as a strength and conditioning coach. Uh, before we get to the meat and potatoes, we wanna take a step back and do this the right way. So no shortcuts in this video. We're gonna show you the right way to not only build stability, a platform, and then the awesome exercises, but we're gonna also have you assess and reassess. So we're gonna check your initial stability as well as any potential for injury. When we're done with this, you should have a handful of awesome exercises that will undoubtedly increase your bow draw strength and will also help you along your journey. So in order to not take any shortcuts, we're gonna do the assessment first. The first thing we're gonna have you do is sit on the floor and draw your bow and just make sure you're not overbowed already. It's very common. And how you do that is make sure that you can pull it back consistently without changing your midline length, without leaning one direction and kind of holding stability without deviation. If you're not overbowed, congratulations, that's awesome. And that's where we want you to start from anyways. It could be simply taking your bow to your local pro shop or doing it yourself, lightening up your, you know, loosening up your limb bolts. The thing I like about these Matthews is that they have different mods. These are 75 pound mods. If this was too much without a bow press, I could just simply buy 70 pound mods with the same draw length at 27 for me, switch those in with two Allens and I've lowered it to the more appropriate load for me where I'm at today. Next, we're gonna grab a dowel or a broomstick and we're going to do two tests to make sure that you have good shoulder mobility as well as stability by doing pass-throughs or dislocations and then behind the neck presses just with the dowel. For your dowel stuff, you guys can literally just grab a piece of PVC pipe or you can grab yourself your, your common household uh, broomstick. Either is gonna be fine. All we're using these tools for is to assess where we're at mobility-wise. All right guys, so you can see I have a dowel resting on the top of my traps and it's behind the neck. Now this is an, not an exercise, this is purely assessment. And I'm going to strict press in a controlled fashion straight overhead without any pain. Okay, just do a handful of reps. Make sure you have full range of motion. Common faults are gonna be bringing the elbows back. And then what that'll create is some rounding and arching to get overhead. This is just a lack of mobility. So again, anytime you can't sit upright and press in a straight line, where my wrist is on top of my elbow and my elbow is on top of my shoulder, any deviation from that line is a telltale sign that you're lacking some sort of mobility about your shoulder capsule and you should be more concerned about improving your mobility or stability before you worry about improving your strength. Next, let's move on to the dowel pass-through or the dislocate. So here's our dowel. We're gonna do a pass-through. Start out with a pretty wide grip. That's gonna just basically determine your mobility. The narrower grip you can hold, the more mobile you are. So I'm gonna start out at the very end of this dowel and I'm just gonna keep my arms extended. I'm gonna go up, over, behind, touch my lower back, keeping my arms extended through the elbow. So we're looking for no pain and we're looking for no compromise. If there's any deviation, stop and understand, maybe film yourself do this and see where you're at. So if you wanna test your mobility, move your hands in a little bit. I'm gonna go a couple inches in. And then the next rep, I'm gonna scoot in a little bit closer. And I'm kind of inching closer towards my end of range of motion where I don't have the mobility to go. Yeah, much closer than that without bending my elbows. So that's a dowel pass through or dislocate. It's just a good opportunity to see, can you do it without pain with your elbows locked? Common faults of dowel pass throughs is just bending the arms. So from here, if you're not able to go all the way behind or if it's one arm, that's when your telltale sign that you you don't have the mobility for that. Widen out so that you're in range and maybe then you still can't do it or you have pain. Understand that there is a deficiency there and so we're gonna basically want to address that before we address improving the strength of your bow drum. If you've passed all three tests, you can pull your bow back seated in a controlled midline fashion. If you can do the press behind without any pain or any elbows dropping back, 
If you've completed the dowel pass-throughs, congratulations. Let's move on to building stability. Stabilization at the shoulder capsule, specifically the shoulder blades. Guys, these are such cool muscles. A lot of them attach to the shoulder blades. Shoulder blades go upward rotation, downward rotation. They do elevation, depression, protraction, retraction. They, they do so much for stability, so we have to isolate and make sure that we have good, strong stability. We as archers are mainly concerned about bringing the shoulder blade closer to the spine and down. So that's gonna be retraction, depression, along that lower trap. So these next exercises are gonna be super important for you to build stability along your midline as well as through the shoulder capsule. Once we've done with the assessment, you can move on to stabilization, which actually will start with your core. All movement starts and ends with your core. So we have to make sure that that is strong enough to build a solid platform and then we'll talk about stabilization through the shoulder capsule. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do is work on the strength component. So all you need is a pair of soup cans. In this instance, I'm using one kg plates. That's 2.2 pounds. I'm gonna teach you the T's and the Y's. Common faults on all these movements is elevation or shrugging. You want to avoid shrugging. We're not inviting your upper traps to the party. We're looking for lower traps and the rhomboids to do majority of the work. So go ahead and bend over at a 90 degree, make sure it's an athletic position. From there, you're going to retract your scaps first and then make a T with your arms. Make sure that your T is truly a 90 degree from your midline. You're gonna hold at the top for like two, three seconds and then back down. I recommend eight to 12 reps without any compromise or shrugging in the traps. When you're done with that, You'll do a similar movement. These are the Y's. Again, you will retract and depress your scaps down, and then you will make a Y with your arms. Hold at the top for two to three seconds, and then let down under control. Again, reset every rep. Also, eight to 12 reps for this movement. Shoulders will be feeling it. Common mistakes is making a T back here, or slowly rising in your chest or shrugging quite a bit, avoid that at all costs. Okay, so we got those Y's and T's done. We're gonna show you three other really exciting band work. These are crossover symmetry bands. You can use any sort of bands, but I, word of caution, err on the side of a light band. We're gonna use three and seven pound bands for these next movements. And it's more about your technique than it is about anything else. So check your ego at the door. These are the bands, they're gonna be set at eye level. We're gonna cross them over, hence the name crossover symmetry. Uh, we're gonna teach you the Y negative first, eight to 12 reps. That's gonna be the general rep range for all these. Always, always, always stop if you feel bad pain. Um, good pain is just kind of that tonic, slow burning sensation, and bad pain is very sharp and direct. That's not good, stop immediately. So, Y negative. Depress. Form your Y. The negative is a slow eccentric deceleration. Again, reset every time. So reset means scaps towards the spine and down. Y negative. This is your negative. Common faults are gonna be shrugging. When you press overhead, make sure that you're not doing any thoracic extension. Make sure that your midline is strong. And as you do the negative, do it under control. Every time reset and depress, watch out for a shrug. So when we say set the midline or activate your core, what we're looking at doing is finding a neutral hip, neutral spine relationship. So some folks will, when they even when they shoot their bows, they'll be anterior pelvic tilt. So from a side view, they'll look like this. What they're doing is their hips are rolling forward anteriorly and they're, they're basically creating undue strain on the lower back. Conversely, it is posterior chain. Some people will have their hips rolling back. And so when you see that from a side view, this will probably be best, it would look like this. And that's not perfect posture either. So we're looking for neutral hip, neutral spine, brace for an impact or a punch so to speak, in your midline, and that'll tighten your whole core. Yeah, you can take your belly button and draw it in towards your spine and up, and then I'll create like a, a corset effect throughout your midline. And for you geeks out there, that'll increase your intra-abdominal pressure and stabilize that relationship of neutral hip, neutral spine. Bottom line is, avoid the Instagram booty pose. Don't be like this. 
when you're shooting a bow or like this, find a nice neutral hip, neutral spine, and you should be doing that while doing all these exercises. The next one is ATYT, my favorite. I'll show you ATYT, that's one rep. My challenge for you is to be able to perform eight to 12 reps unbroken. So one ATYT is one rep. Depress, make your A, make your T, make your Y, make your T, that's one rep. So A, T, Y, T, that's two. Perform that for eight to 12 reps in a row, you're gonna be feeling a good healthy burn. Last but not least is the 90-90 from the crossover series, looks like this. You're gonna start out by just bring your shoulder blades towards the spine and down. You'll make a 90 degrees, you'll externally rotate and hold and you'll come back out of the pose and out, reset, depress, 90, 90, back out. Once I've reached my max external rotation range of motion, then I'm going to slowly, eccentrically lower it down and back out. These three movements, coupled with uh, the soup can exercises, you're gonna create a lot of stable uh, for your bow drawing process, and you can do this almost every day, depending on how your shoulders feel. It could be used as a warm up, so you can again supplement your workout of the day by doing your bow draw due diligence. Okay guys, so we built some stability and hopefully you felt some good healthy burn through the shoulders and you're understanding more like kinesthetic awareness or proprioception, like communication from your brain to your muscles of, oh yeah, shoulder blades need to go closer to the spine and down and how that's gonna translate to better archery, which is what we're all after. Now let's work on how to actually get to the meat and potatoes, like some good solid exercises to add to your program that will undoubtedly improve your bow draw strength. All right guys, so we're gonna show you some awesome strength movements, actually just three. They're all isometric. What does that mean? It means that your muscles not change in length. How long should you hold these for? I don't know. 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. Hopefully you're adding more time each week. Let's show you the first one. So this first movement, I'm gonna use five pound plate. And what I'm gonna do is just set up in kind of a nice, good, solid plank position. I'm not shrugging, I'm depressing. And I'm just gonna take this out to the side and I'm gonna hold for 30 seconds. Now, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get real shaky, but I'm hitting my core. I'm stabilizing my bow arm and my, my draw arm all at the same time. And this will get really tricky to maintain good form. You might wanna film yourself doing this, making sure you're not doing any compromising and that you're holding a really strong position. When you're done, switch sides. Make sure you're not shrugging, but you're depressing. Come out to your side. Don't shrug here, keep it depressed and stabilize along your midline. This is a great movement. Goal is 30 seconds each side or longer. You do you and uh, we'll show you the next one. So the next one, I'm just gonna use a simple light dumbbell. That word is relative. That could be a 50 pound dumbbell. It could be a 25 pound dumbbell. It could be a hundred pound. In our instance, we're gonna film with a 25 pound. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my, stip, my bow arm and I'm gonna go ahead and depress, get a nice wide plank. And from here, I'm gonna depress down and I'm gonna pull back and I'm gonna hold in this draw position for 30 seconds is the goal, possibly a minute, and then I'm gonna switch sides. Our last static position will be a pull-up hold. If you don't have pull-ups, don't worry. Just get yourself boosted up above the pull-up bar and hold for as long as possible. We're also gonna show you the ring row option in case you don't have a pull-up bar. All right guys, so we're gonna show you the strength. This is like the fun, sexy stuff. So we're gonna start with a push-up off a dumbbell, but these are not like your normal push-ups. You're going to work through a neutral phase, you're gonna do a retraction phase, and then you'll do your normal push-up. This is like a rendition of scapular push-ups with a full push-up. Check it out. So set up in a strong plank position. The first thing I'll do is go ahead and depress my scaps towards the spine, belly button drawn in tight, full range of motion push up, all the way back out, reset those scaps, and then decelerate down. 
and push up. So it's really a slower, methodical push up where we retract those scaps every rep. So the key here is to bring the shoulder blades towards the spine and down and then start your push up every rep. Do as many reps as possible. Um, you'll start out with maybe 10, maybe 20. Just make sure that you're, you're not compromising your midline as well. So we're kind of getting a lot of bang for our buck in this movement. And then you're gonna go right into bent over rows. We call these penlay rows in my world, but I'll show you what we're looking for. You're gonna have a lot of tension in your hamstrings and you're gonna really focus on the squeeze as far as your lats, your rhomboids, your lower traps. So set up in an athletic position. So what I wanna do is kinda of get like where I'm ready to be an athlete, so to speak. So in athletic positions here, I'll just hinge a little bit more. My dumbbells are just off the ground. I'm gonna pick them to where they're just barely off the ground. I'm gonna bring my shoulder blades together, follow with my elbows, squeeze at the top, and let all the way back out. Depress and row. We're not shrugging. So nowhere in sight does this happen. Depress, row, back out. Pause at the top for just a few seconds. Shoot for double digit reps, at least 10, and then move on to the next part. Okay, we're gonna be doing scat pull-ups. So scat pull-ups are just like those scat push-ups. We're still doing a pull-up if you have them. If you don't, you'll just do the first part. Let me walk you through. So from a dead hang position, you're gonna just let it go. And from here, you're gonna depress everything down into a strong starting position. For some of you, this is, this is your workout. So you're gonna come back down, depress, hold for a few seconds, and back down. If you have pull-ups, just do a few pull-ups, but depress, pull up, all the way back out. Depress, pull up, all the way back out. So what you'll see is that this is a really tough movement, but it's promoting what we're after. Taking those lower traps, depressing those scaps down, and building lots of back strength. So to me, this is the cornerstone movement of everything we've showed you up to this point. Okay guys, so we're gonna use a lacrosse ball. Um, this is a double lacrosse ball for like literally working on mobility, but you can buy a lacrosse ball at a sporting goods store for a couple bucks. And what it can do is it can really break up those muscle knots, those muscle adhesions where they get gummy. And uh, if you've never experienced that, a lot of athletes will go to a massage therapist and the massage therapist will quickly find all your hot spots. Well, this is your take home massage therapist. You can literally put it up against the wall or lay on it and you can work through external rotation, have you, and find those, there's a hot spot right there, and just break that tissue up. Get new blood in there, promote recovery, get some of the cellular waste and debris out of there. So this really promotes healing as well as preventing gum up spots. And you don't have to have a lacrosse ball. You can use a baseball or a softball, but you can do your own self mile fascial release. There's a lot of videos out there that can go into greater detail. We just wanted you to be aware of your take home massage therapist and to be using it pretty much daily if you can. All right guys, so elk shape best practices is Make sure you assess where you're at, then you create some stability, not only in the midline, but in your shoulder capsule, and then improve your strength and use these as a supplement to your daily exercise. And after 28 days, we feel like you'll see a noticeable improvement without taking a shortcut. We're not about shortcuts. We want it to be slow, steady, sustainable, like a strong trajectory so you can increase your draw strength over time.